Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 15 of my Z80 programming tutorials. Now we've been looking at how to set palettes on various systems over the last few weeks, including the Amstrad CPC, the Enterprise, and the Sam Coupe, but we're still going to continue, and today we're going to have a look at the MSX and the V9990 graphics accelerator, which is generally used on the MSX, but now is also supported on the Amstrad CPC. Both of these systems support 16 colors, and we'll be setting the palettes, but the palette definitions do differ on these two systems, but in the same as the last week's episode, on all of the systems we're going to be looking at, we're going to be using a one nibble per channel color definition, and that's in the format the first nibble unused, the second nibble green, the third nibble red, and the fourth nibble blue. And we'll be passing that in the HL register. The A register will be the color channel we want to change, and in that way we can set a single definition on all of our systems and have a similar palette on all of them so that the ga game or whatever we're writing works the same on every system. So here you can see the standard MSX internal graphics chip, and you can see the colors of our Chibico character. We will be looking at it on the V9K as well, but to be honest, you won't see any difference today because while the V9K does have superior colors, on a general day-to-day -day, um, sort of example, it doesn't make too much difference. It's only when you're doing a smooth fade or something like that that you would notice the difference. So anyway, let's have a look and we'll see what we're dealing with. So let's have a look at what we actually have to do to get the VDP to change the colors. Well, on the standard MSX2, the first thing we have to do is we have to set register 16 to the color that we want to send to change. And the way we do that is we send the color number to the VDP with this out command here. And then we um, send the, the register number plus 128 to the um, control port as well. That selects the color we want to change. And then we have to send our definitions. We send two consecutive bytes. The first one will contain three bits of red in these bits here and three bits of blue. And the second byte will contain the three bits of green. All the other bits here are unused. They don't do anything. The V9K is slightly different. We set both a color number and a channel. Now, the benefit of the um, color selection register on the V9K is it auto increments. So if we just wanted to change the red channel of color, color three, for example, we could do that. That's not something we actually do in these examples. We're setting all of the channels of a color all at the same time. But what it means is we can set the first color channel and then just keep writing to that register to set the um, successive channels. So what we need to do is we need to set these bits here to the number. So if bit two was one, that would be setting the red channel of color one. If this was one, it would be setting the green channel. And if this was two, then it would be setting the blue channel. So we just need to shift the number of the um, color we want to change two bits to the left, write that to register 14, and that selects our, co our color channel that we want to change. Then we send our red, green, blue values to the V9K's dedicated palette port, and that will do the job. So there we go, that's the, that's the theory done. So let's have a look at the code we're going to be using today. So my first example is this one, which is my standard bitmap test, which we've seen in the past. Uh, it, this is the exact same code as we looked at for the um, CPC and the Enterprise and all of those kind of systems. So let's have a look at it again today. So here's our palette definition down here. And as I said, the first nibble is unused, so it's always zero. The next one is the green channel, then the red, then the blue, and each one is a nibble, so it's zero to F for 0 to 15. When it comes to setting the palette numbers, we're just loading HL with the new palette definition. We're loading A with the number of the palette, so zero is the background, and 15 is the last color option. And we're using this set palette command, which we've seen on the other systems, and today we're gonna to see on the MSX. Now, when it comes to the V9K, uh, the example we're looking at here doesn't actually work with the V9K. I've not coded the um, conventional bitmap code that you see that this uses. The reason for that is, to be honest, the V9K is very, very fast when it comes to blitting sprites and things like that. It's no faster than an MSX2 when it comes to bitmap work in the very crude way that this example uses. But it does benefit from the tarmac code that I wrote for the Grimes Z80 project. So let's have a look at that on the V9K. I've enabled the V9K with this option here. And then if I just do a build. You can see here's a hello world. And we've got the Chibico icon here. And this is being compiled with the V9K. So you can see it does work. And as I said before, the colors all look the same. And that's because the de definition is being converted. This is the same palette definition for the V9K. And it's being converted to whatever that system needs. And the procedure is as a, I just very quickly described. So let's have a look at it in a bit more detail. 
So first of all, we don't want to look at any pallet definition above 15. Pallet 16 is the border on the CPC, but on the MSX we're not using that. Now on the V9K, what we need to do is we need to select register 14, which is the definition of the um, color number and the channel number that we want to change. As I said, we're changing all the channels consecutively. So we're always going to start the channel number as zero, which is red. So at this point, because of this push pop, A will contain the color number we want to change. So we just shift that two bits to the left and then we write it to the data port, which sets register 14 to the color number and the channel red. Now all we need to do is take our top nibble of L, which will contain our red value. We then shift it to the right. Now we need five bits for the, the MSX V9K's color definitions. Of course, we only actually have four because we're only using a single nibble, but we need to get them in the right position and the, the bottom bit will always be zero. So we then write that to the palette port and that will send the red. We do the same for the green, this time shifting it one to the left again, setting that bottom bit to zero. Save it into the, again, so that saves the green, same to the palette port. And then we do the same for blue. And that has defined that color for the V9K. So at that point, we're ready to return. On the MSX1, it's almost the same. What we do is we um, send the color number to the control register and then we tell the uh, v VDP that that data we just sent to the control register was a color number and the color number port is register 16. So we then send 128 plus 16, which tells the system that data I just sent you, that's the new value for register 16, in effect, the color number. From then on, any data we send to the pallet port will be used as an updated color for that register. We need to send two bytes. The first byte is the red and blue. Now, again, we do have to do some shifting because on the MSX, we're only using three bits per channel and our single nibble definition uses four bits. So we need to remove the bottom bit and then shift them to the right. That's done our red and blue. Then we do the same for the green, which is in H. So we remove one of the bits. There's actually no data here. So we could have set all of these to zero. We will shift it to the right and send it again to the palette register. So that will now set our MSX palette definition. Now at this point, I'd like to explain to you a bit about why I'm using these single nibble per channel definitions. Uh, this all came from the Chibi Akamas game, which I was writing at the time. The uh, Amstrad CPC uses these green, red, blue, single nibble per channel definitions. And I had started writing some code that used that for the um, CPC plus, but used these three bit per channel definitions for the MSX and the V9K. Now, the problem with the three bit definitions is while they were generally quite good for the in-game code, you wouldn't really notice any difference. When it came to the start and the end of the level, I wrote some fading in and fading out code. And it was very noticeable on the V9K that it was quite inferior to the CPC plus, even though the V9K is actually in terms of color depth, superior to the CPC plus. And so, well, I was a bit frustrated by that. And so I thought, well, rather than using these um, three bit per channel definitions of the MSX on the V9K, I should use the um, same as the CPC plus, the four bit per channel definitions. But then I thought, well, actually I could do it the other way around. I could use the CPC plus channel definitions for the MSX2 as well, just convert them down, remove one of the bits as we see here. And that allows me to use that single definition for all three systems. So not only am I getting the job done, I'm actually reducing my time defining palettes and testing and troubleshooting. And so I've extended this now beyond those systems that I supported for Chibi Akamas onto all of the systems that I'm doing now. And it's currently Z80 systems, but I'm gonna go on beyond the Z80 to the 6502 and the 68000 systems. And on all of these systems, I'm gonna be using the same palette definitions, because as I've said before, it's far easier to have a common way of working with things on many, many systems. You've got one time testing, you've got one time working out what color definitions you're gonna use. And one nibble per channel is at least good enough for all of the systems. And in a lot of the cases, it's actually superior to the capabilities of the systems. So while we could have an extra bit of definition on the V9K, we don't really miss it. it but when we were only using three bits for our color definition, our fades really weren't that good. So there we go. Anyway, that's actually all we have for today. Very quick lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it. As I've said it before, as always, you can download these source codes from my website and there's, a, there's the text-based documentation which we just looked over. 
Next week, we're going to extend this even further. We're going to be looking at the master system and the game gear. We're going to be using the same color definitions again, and we're going to learn how to make those systems do colors. They're quite interesting because even though the master system and game gear are almost the exact same system, the game gear actually has superior color capabilities over the master system. So just like today the v with the V9K, the game gear has superior color depth, whereas the master system is more like the MSX, that it's got very limited color depth. But our color definitions we've used today will work on all of those systems. Well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. Thanks for watching and goodbye.